Welcome to In the Dark. I am here sitting in my car once again, hiding from my kids. <laughs> Came home from work about an hour ago, eh, two hours ago, nearly. And typically I come in and I get tackled by my little granddaughter, Blair, who can't wait to see me. In fact, I had a heck of a time going to work today because she didn't want to get out of my bus either. She says it's Blair's bus and it's awesome. So I I have an ice cream truck. Um, it's a bus. It's actually really beautiful. It, it's got real bright yellow. It's got strobe lights inside. Um, just all decked out, real decorative. It's just really clean and beautiful. It's just beautiful bus. Um, I don't believe in running around in ice cream trucks that look like something that somebody pulled out of a junkyard. So I think it's extremely important to take the initiative and really try to, you know, make them look nice and clean and presentable. And if you don't have the funds to do that right away, once you start up with it, then you should really try to care about that stuff. But it's a really great bus. I really love it. I have a really great business. Um, if anybody hasn't caught my story, I read the Harry Pumpkin on YouTube or on the uh, podcast channels. Um, it's up there. It's a really cute little Halloween story for children. And hopefully I read it okay. I didn't review it. Um, but I think I was a little nervous reading it because it was, it's, it's just, you're, it's kind of funny when you're doing your own thing, you know, presenting it to somebody, you feel a little bit more self-conscious about it, but, um, it's a really cute story, Halloween story since Halloween's right around the corner. Um, you know, it's on Amazon as well. You can order a physical copy of it if you want to see all the pictures that I illustrated, or you can order it on Amazon and see all the pictures as well. I did some really great illustrations for that book. Some of them aren't as great. I had some pages I wish I would have, you know, done over, but it was my first little Christmas, or my little, my, sorry about that, my first little um, kid's story. So it was really fun. I enjoyed doing it. And it actually started out, the only reason I had done this book was because I wanted to give somebody that was dragging their heels about writing something. And I wanted to show them that it can be done, even if it's something that simple. So that was why I did it. And um, I really had fun doing it. I wrote a Christmas story too. That's really a good one called uh, The Legend of Christmas and the First Flying Reindeer. It's a long title. I'll be reading that around Christmas time or, you know, beginning of eh, probably the end of November, probably after Thanksgiving. That's when I turn on all my Christmas music and I love it. Um, but it's a really, that one's a really cute story. I like that one even better than the, the Harry Pumpkin. But um, I had a radio station that actually offered to read it on the station. If it's Christian station. If I submitted it, I have had some really weird comments this week. Um, my YouTube channel is really picking up just really just out of the blue went from, you know, just, you know, a few handfuls of followers to up to, you know, it's getting up to the hundreds now. And I love that. And it's really great. And the comments I've had are just wonderful. Some of the people, I have to tell you, though, you're going to always have negativity. You're always going to have hate. No matter what you do, you're going to have people that hate you or they want to cause problems for you. You don't know if it's even the government that's sending in like bots and stuff to you know, do stuff to your channel. You don't know if they're trying to discredit you. Um, just some people are just angry. But this one person today really bothered me because they said to me, I have never brought politics into this. Okay. I won't bring politics into this because I'm going to tell you guys, I have people that are Republicans, people that are Democrats, people that are liberals, and people that don't even vote all of which I love very much. I've seen Republicans vote Democrat. I've seen Democrat vote Republican. You are entitled to your opinions. You're entitled to your beliefs without being attacked. And it is not right that people get on there. And whenever something happens in the world, they start bringing up what party they're affiliated with. Oh, you must be a Republican. You must be a Trump supporter. You must be a Biden supporter. Only those people would act like this. Do you guys realize how that's actually like, it's almost like a form of racism. 
Okay, not racism, but it's like, what would the word be for it? it it's, it's along those lines of stereotyping, um, you know, a prejudiceness against somebody. Like, there is some serious bullying going on in this world today over what political party somebody's affiliated with. <clears throat> I realize we all have very passionate beliefs. I do myself, okay? But I also recognize that most people have the political party that they choose because of how they were raised. Most people that I know follow whatever political party that they follow because that's the household they were raised in. Most, not all. And the other thing with it is that it's life's experiences. I have an aunt of mine who's a straight Democrat and she hates Trump, literally despises him. And she's a Christian. That's not a very Christian thing to do, to hate anybody. But she hates him. I love her dearly. She's a wonderful person. The reason she hates him is because of the, the, the borders. The reason she's so passionate about the borders is because there's a young woman that's like her daughter that was sent back to Mexico and they're, they're having issues with it. It just shows you that there's reasons why people feel the way they do in a lot of instances. You know, they've had personal things that have happened in their life that has caused them to feel the way they do. You know, somebody might have somebody that was killed by somebody that came across the border. So, of course, they're going to really vie for the borders to be closed, whereas somebody else has somebody stuck in Mexico that they love. There's, there's the differences, guys. Like, you've got to be patient with each other. You know, there's a lot of things going on in this world I don't agree with, but we have got to understand that Satan is running the show down here. Okay, I had a falling out with my aunt a couple weeks ago, and it was a few weeks ago. I don't know how many weeks ago it was, but, you know, and I could feel a demon in the room causing the anger when I, when this was going on, I could physically feel it inside of myself. I could feel it, that this was all orchestrated and being caused by something that was dark. It was a dark force and I could feel it. So I just couldn't believe this person said this to me. They said that, you know, I don't know exactly how they wrote, how they put it. In fact, I could probably try to find it here. I, I actually couldn't believe this comment. I was just like, boy, the audacity some people have to say the stuff they do. And it upset me, you know. Um, it wasn't cool. Here it is. Richard Latimer. <laughs> I usually wouldn't even say a name, but I have to say this. Let me guess. He says, she or you is a, an authoritarian, a.k.a. Republican." whom only makes this type of statement when real Americans are in office, not your beloved seditionist. Your or she is only after to make the current whack jobs even wackier. First of all, I don't even know what this means. And I don't even know what was said in my podcast. My podcast is mainly about God or cryptids. I don't even know what I said that would even cause him to even put something like this up here. So it was pretty crazy stuff. My response was, have I brought political parties into my podcast? Question mark. Never. I love my Democrat and Republican friends and family. Thank you. People have a right to vote for what feels right to them. You can lose yourself from my channel. This is not a place for single-minded, hateful people who hate someone for what political party they choose. I know good and bad in every party. Most of the reasons why people vote the way they do come from life's experiences or what their family taught them. This hate people like you are spreading is out of control. It's Satan, and you're falling for it. 
And just to clear up your opinion, I vote for who I feel is the best candidate. I feel sorry for people like you who talk to others like this. So this is something I can tell you, I'm not going to put up with this. I don't care if I have zero followers or zero subscribers. No way am I putting up with these kind of comments. Okay, that's just, it's not even, it's not even necessary. It's a complete bullying attack on people for no reason. And then I read something this week on Twitter. Alec Baldwin um, had, this, this thing had occurred with Alec Baldwin where he, you know, I mean, I don't care if you like Alec Baldwin or not. Okay, what he went through and what he's about to go through is horrible. It is nothing to mock in any way. And this Republican Congress mom, woman put something up on Twitter that was really uncalled for and out of line. Okay, there isn't a Republican or a Democrat that would agree with what this woman put up there. And people started making it about the Republican Party because she's a Republican. And I thought, my God, why can't people understand that there is good and bad in every party? Okay. I just, I don't understand it. And I'm just tired of it. I'm tired of the, you know, I don't know what word I would even use. There's so many that come to mind, but they just don't fit. There has to be, somebody needs to invent a new word for these people that attack each other for what political party that they, they, they're involved in. You know, I, I just, I don't know when this started. Like, I don't know why. This is happening to the degree that it is. It's like this spirit of hate has been unleashed into this world. And anything and everything that they can use to, to hate, they'll, they'll use. And, you know, it started out with racism and, you know, wars against neighbors and brothers and, you know, racism. And now we're into political parties and... There's just always something that's being, you know, that some kind of hate that's being spread and something that's causing it. Everybody needs to get a grip on themselves right now. Okay? It doesn't matter what president is in office. I would say probably 45% of Americans are going to hate them. So we just need to be patient with each other as much as we can be. Try to get through this as best we can, you know? And in every president, there's typically some good and bad in all of them. So I don't agree with what one president does 100% in any way. I never have. You know, there's been a couple really good ones. But believe me, they're far from perfect. They're humans and they're fallible. Okay, and the problem is a lot of the stuff that goes on, it isn't even the president that's doing it. He's just the, he's their token, their figurehead that whoever's pulling the strings behind the scenes uses. So anyway, I just had to say that, um, just some of the comments I got, you know, that, that happened. And then there was something else, you know, just people attacking, you know, things you say about religion, about God, you know, somebody said, you know, I didn't know this was going to be a, a sermon. And I thought, boy, I've never sermonized my my channel, my episodes. And if you listen to enough of my channel, instead of forming an opinion on possibly one of my episodes, you'll get that there's a lot of episodes, you know, that I'm not going overboard with talking about God, but I do want to make it clear. My channel is about God. My channel is about the Bible. My channel is about the end times. My channel is about demons and cryptids and spirits and ghosts and entities and dark forces and all kinds of stuff. That's what this channel is about. Our government, the cover-ups, conspiracies, you know, what they call conspiracies so they can undermine, you know, anything that somebody comes out with, ETs, extraterrestrials. You know, you name it, my channel is about all of it. So if you have a problem with God, I would find another channel. Because this is definitely something that I'm going to be talking about. This is my job right now. Okay? I work for God. I love him very much. 
I try to serve him. I'm not a perfect person. None of us are. But I do, you know, try to live as sin-free as I possibly can. And believe me, it is a battle. <laughs> I mean, I'm in, you know, battle mode constantly trying not to sin. But this is important. We, there is a lot of stuff going on in this world. A lot. We live in a full-blown supernatural realm. And anybody that doesn't see that is crazy. Because there is some serious stuff going on. And we need to know as much as we can know about it. Speaking of which, <clears throat> I'm going back into my talk about I'm here about Ted Gunderson. I wanted to go into the second part of this particular, these episodes. I, I had had other ones before, but I also started another one um, in particular, and this is the second part of it. Um, he was a man that worked for the FBI. He was a head of the FBI for 30 years, and he was a whist he became a whistleblower through a case that he had taken on and it started taking him down the rabbit hole and he started, you know, finding out a lot of stuff that he did not know the whole time he lived in, or worked in the FBI and was stunned to find out what was really going on and he had a lot of uh, threats on his life and um, a lot of stuff went down with him. There's a lot of others too. He's just one of them. And I wanted to bring to your attention what he had to say. So that's what um, I wanted to talk about. I wanted to get more into that today. Before I do, I wanted to tell you a couple things. Hang on a second. Got to get a drink here. Um, I was sitting at my piano the other day. And I turned around. I was playing for my granddaughter. She loves it when I play the piano. And I turned around. I stopped playing and I turned around. And I had a drink on my table. And my table's rough. It's marbleized, but it has like this rough type of surface. So when you try to run something along the table, it catches. Almost like, um, I don't even know what it would be. Like, it, it isn't like, a, it, it, it just has this material that it's made out of that doesn't allow something to slide that, that easily without making noises. You know, it has like, just, it's like a catch. And I was sitting there and I was looking at, at Blair and I was talking to somebody else in the room and I had a drink on my table and the drink slid from one end of my end table right down to where the cord was for my stained glass Tiffany lamp. It slid all across, you know, right down the table. And I couldn't believe it. I just sat there and I looked at this and I watched this cup literally slide across my table. And I tried to, you know, go back and recreate it. And the cup kept catching. Like, you know, it just, it had, it was like whatever the stuff's made of, it, it kept stopping it. And, but when I, this happened, when it first happened, I just sat there. And I just laughed. I was like, wow. And that's what I said. I was like, that's that's really something. I didn't really react to it because I was like, I'm not going to give them any play. I'm certainly not going to, if it's something bad, I'm not going to let them, you know, get off on my fear. And if it was something good, then, hey, I acknowledge that you're there, you know, but it was pretty crazy stuff. And the same night, Give me a second here, guys. My voice gets a little uh, messed up here. Uh, the same night, my son had seen, um, he walked up to my one daughter, uh, Chandler, had a bedroom here, and now Tressa's staying in the bedroom. And he walked, like, past the bedroom. He kind of looked in, in the doorway, through, like, the, the, the back of the door, where you could see that, where it's a crack there. And he looked through it, and he said he could see a total shadow figure standing in the room 
And I was like, wow. And Blair, every time my granddaughter goes into this room, she comes flying out and she screams, there's monsters. And we didn't, you know, we thought she was just a kid. She was just making this up. But then when Tristan saw it the other day and he's 16, he's very, um, you know, very close to God. And it, it really makes you think, you know, when somebody that's older, you know, basically a grown up sees it and comes down and says, yeah, you know, I saw something was in that room. So our house is pretty active. It's a pretty active house. It gets pretty crazy around here. Okay. So I want to get into this David Gunderson. I'm sorry. Ken, Ted Gunderson. Why do I keep saying David Gunderson? I don't know why I do. Um, so we have the finders. We have the Franklin cover-up that I spoke about in my previous episode. And we have the pawns in the game, which are the satanic Illuminati members. That's what we were talking about before. So Ted Gunderson had gotten into another case with a boy named Johnny Gosh. He was a newspaper boy in West Des Moines, Iowa, on a Sunday. He was about to deliver his newspapers, but never delivered any newspapers. He disappeared. The mother, I think it's Noreen Gosh, was dumbfounded and demanded an investigation from the FBI and the West Des Moines Police Department. This was something that hadn't been done before. I believe Johnny Gosh was the first boy who started um, the faces on the milk carton at the time. That's how hard she had fought for this case. Most mothers don't do that. Okay. Um, bear with me. I'm sitting in my car, so this is not easy to do this. The police chief said to her uh, they were not going to investigate it, and neither was the FBI. On the premise, there were no witnesses that saw him being grabbed or placed in a vehicle. Ted Gunderson stated in all the years he had been an FBI agent, after 24 hours, it was automatic. They had to investigate it. Today, the children are disappearing in this country at a rate of 83 or more per hour. That's 83 families 83 children, 83 lives that are turned upside down forever, per hour, just in the United States alone. 83 innocent little beings crying, scared, confused, hurting, being kidnapped, raped, and in most cases murdered at the hands of these sick, degenerate, demon-filled if not actual demons actually living and breathing on this planet, people. If you want to do something, make a difference. Make a real difference. Get involved. You know, hunt these son of a bitches down like the dogs they are. Join organizations that do this. Like there's some out there that actually, and they need people badly. I, I've seen interviews with them. You know, there's there's a, a, a select few that are out there fighting against these people that are, are abducting children, these rings that are abducting children. I don't even know if they're all people, guys. I, I truly believe they're, they're reptilians and ETs and just demons. Um, they're, they're just nearly, there aren't nearly enough people that are willing to get their hands dirty with this stuff. This is a battleground. It's a spiritual warfare that affects us physically and emotionally as well. And the innocent are the ones who suffer the most. So if you guys, you know, if your life feels like it's not going anywhere and you don't have a lot to do or you're bored or, you know, you feel like you don't have a purpose, get involved with this. Okay. So that's over 700 thousand children a year or more that go missing in the United States alone. 700,000 or more a year go missing in the United States alone. 
and you think you're safe, your family's safe. Oh my God, it's just crazy. And these bastards, these sick bastards, they're daring, they're aggressive. You know, they know if they jump out of a vehicle in broad daylight and grab a child, children, a woman, even a man, they will be long gone by the time the police even get there. They're professionals, you know, with planned routes. They will walk into a grocery store and steal your child right out of a cart, you know, with another one watching his back and be out of that store and in the vehicle and off by the time police are even notified, gone onto a major highway or even hiding at like a storage facility, possibly switching cars. These guys are professionals. They're fast. They're extremely aggressive, extremely daring. They know that nobody's ever really going to identify them. And they just grab and go. You know, it happens so quick and efficiently. It's mind-boggling. The FBI refuses to investigate most of these cases, too. That's what's really crazy. So... If you really still think there's something that's, you know, something crazy that's not going on, you really need a reality check. This is super, super sinister stuff. Give me a second. So after the Nebraska case, and part of it, we have a young man named Jeff Gannon who has appeared at the White House using a fraudulent press pass. Certain people in the White House were suspicious of him and questioned him because of when he would engage in president in press conferences with the president, like President Bush. He was asking what they call soft questions, meaning Gannett would ask the president, some, you know, a question, the president would answer it, and it was something he would know to answer, like he would know exactly how to answer it, and it would make the president look good. So someone started checking into his background and learned he was actually an individual named, get this, Jim Guckard, who had a homosexual website. So Jeff Gannon is an alias of Jim Guckard. His pic appeared on the internet, and he is believed to be Johnny Gosh, the paper boy who went missing September 5th, 1982. The mother, Noreen Gosh, wrote a book called Why Johnny Can't Come Home. And I'll tell you why this happened later. Gunderson did a two-hour interview with her. She did not sit still for the case, mostly like most mothers would. They don't, they don't, they, they mourn. You know, and then they go silent. They don't do much. But but Noreen got extremely involved with this case and did everything in her power to not only find her son, but then expose what was going on with her son by writing her book. She became actively involved to blow the lid off of this whole ordeal. She demanded the FBI and the police investigate. They wouldn't because the case tied into the Franklin cover-up. If you don't know about the Franklin cover-up, look that up. Uh, how many people does it... Well, I just I basically have a question I wanted to bring reference to. What were the people that went missing here? Hang on a second, guys. I'm getting interrupted. Give me a second here. I'll be right back with you. Hey, guys. I will be right back after a short break. Hey, everybody. If you guys like this show and you want to make your own podcast, let me tell you a little bit about Anchor. It's free, for one. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. And now you can even add any song from Spotify directly to your episodes. The possibilities are endless for what you can create, whether it's music analysis, your own radio show, or something the world's never heard before. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Very easy, 
very enjoyable platform to start a podcast on. Trust me. So download your free Anchor app today or go to anchor.fm, that's F as in Frank, M as in Mary, to get started. Check it out, you guys. It's worth it. Okay, guys, I'm back. So the question is, like, how many people does it take to come out to risk their lives and their families' lives until you believe? What does it take to get us mobile and motivated to get involved? It's just something you got to think about, you know? Some of our top politicians in the country, leading businessmen, had been ID'd. Many others as well. Like there was a lot of people that these kids had ID'd. Look at the Epstein case that, that came out. I mean, that should tell you something right there. Head of Nebraska Forestry Service even was ID'd by the children. Uh, 80 children came forward in the Nebraska case. And it goes all the way up to the White House. 1987, Paul Benozzi was furnishing toys, what they call the little boys, boy toys, to the White House itself. Gunderson had the names of many, but Jeff Gannon was, in fact, Johnny Gosh. The mother identified him. He had scars on his body, markings, etc. Gunderson had spoken with one of the youngsters involved in all this that had come forward and they also verified that Gannon was indeed Johnny Gosh. So how did Johnny Gosh get from West Des Moines, Iowa at 12 years old all the way to the White House with a phony press pass? What happened to Johnny was that he was transported from West Des Moines, Iowa, to Sioux City, was placed on a farm for three weeks, sexually molested. He was taken to the mountains of Colorado, placed in a cage in a house or a cabin, and later was used as a sex slave. They didn't kill or sacrifice him, but a number of the other kids are used in satanic sacrifices. He also escaped. He escaped with another young man. They stole a car in 1997. Johnny knocked on his mother's door at 2.30 in the morning and said he wanted to talk to her. He was there with another young boy. He came in and said, Mother, I was kidnapped. I've been placed in a covert military. Let me repeat that. I've been placed in a covert military CIA controlled, mind controlled project. It just goes right through you, doesn't it? This kid was kidnapped off of his paper route. Car had circled around him three times in the morning. He was there with his dog. There was another boy, one of his friends that was with him, that went off and did his papers. And he said the guy made him nervous, scared him. But he talked to Johnny, kept asking for directions to the same place. Took off with this kid somehow. Took him to a farm at 12 years old to sexually molest him to have people, Satanists, come in and sexually molest him. Then he was taken to a cage in a military CIA-controlled project, guys. And what do we do? We hear this stuff. It makes you cry. It makes you angry. It upsets you. And then you just go back to your lives. Nobody ever does anything. The people that are out doing something, they need more people. They need more forces, guys. Get involved in whatever capacity you can. He was used, he told his mother, I was used as a sex slave. He said he couldn't come forward at this time or they will kill me. So 
he told his mother. Possibly kill her too. So are you guys feeling sick yet? Are you digesting this? Still not grasping the reality of this? The sickness? I know what it makes me want to do. How about you? That was the last time Marie, or Noreen Gosh spoke to her son, 1997. Several years after that, a girl named Burns, who was, sorry, my nose is a little clogged up. My allergies are acting up. Uh, who was a producer for 2020, decided to do a story on the Johnny Gosh kidnapping and Nebraska case. Mm-hmm. And she interviewed, hang on a second. And she interviewed Gunderson, who spent five days with her. He gave her all the info he had on his research. And then she got a lead that Johnny was hiding out on an Indian reservation at northern Minnesota. He had gone into hiding. He was a real mind control victim. If you don't know anything about the mind control stuff, guys, the MK Ultra mind control, you know, what they all say is a conspiracy. You know, anything they don't want us to know about that we do find out about is a conspiracy. And we're all nuts. You know, the 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 hundreds of thousands of people since the eighteen hundreds that have seen all these sightings of cryptids, different generations for hundreds of years all across the entire world, and they all suddenly or seemingly have the same description. Don't you know we're all crazy? Everybody's crazy. You know, all these FBI whistleblowers, CIA whistleblowers, people that are risking their lives and their families are getting killed to tell us the truth, but they're all just nuts. You know, don't you know that? (laughs) It's all conspiracy. Yeah, that's a conspiracy, all right. (laughs) I think they need a new word for that. Okay. Let me get back to where I was here. So, if you don't know anything about MK Ultra Mind Control, it came into this country, and it is a real thing. It came in with a German scientist during World War II. They were involved with the Nazis during and prior to the war in developing robots and individuals to be used on command in anything, including assassinations. And, hang on a second, got to get my notes. I don't like to do this without them. Anything else that they wished and other nefarious activities. This is all true. It's well documented. It's real stuff. It's not, quote, conspiracy. The CIA MK Ultra program was investigated by Congress in 1987. Congress said, CIA, you've got to quit doing that. It's not right. You're bad boys. And the CIA said, okay, we'll quit. Now, if you believe that, you really need your head checked. Don't kid yourselves. It's going on and active today. Very active today. There are plenty of us. I'm sorry. There are plenty of its victims out there. But going back to the Nebraska case in MK Ultra, a lot of this training took place at the Offutt Air Force Base at, in Omaha, Nebraska, which is the Strategic Air Command Headquarters. After 9-11, the president flew to the south somewhere, possibly Louisiana, New Orleans, and then he flew to Offutt Air Force Base in the afternoon of September 11th, 2001, and they had a party there in the morning at 9.30. I wonder what time 9-11 happened. He missed the party. He was sorry he missed the party on September 11th. I don't even have words for some of this stuff. Of all the days, why the party? What were they celebrating? Warren Buffett was there, by the way. The MK Ultra program has been very actively administered 
not only at the Offutt Air Force Base, but also at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, the place where Dr. McDonald, who I spoke about in another episode, his family, where he was um, accused of and his family was slaughtered in 1970. It's so crazy that all these places are so closely related. In the early 1990s, Yorkshire TV came to the United States with a camera crew for seven months to do a documentary on the Nebraska case. They went back to England, produced the documentary, and they brought it over to the United States and listed it in the TV guide to be aired on May the 3rd, 1994. That is a day before my birthday. When certain members of Congress found out about it, they threatened the cable industry with restrictive legislative actions. Restrictive legislation, really, is what it would be called. And somebody anonymously bought up the rights to the videotape for the documentary and ordered all copies destroyed. Well, gee, I wonder who that would have been. Can't even imagine that. Uh, there is a bootleg copy of the documentary that was sold by Gunderson for years to get the info out there. Gunderson got a copy of the TV guide not listed anymore. It was a new reprinted edition. He then went to the L.A. Times because it wasn't they had taken out the um, listing for this that it was supposed to be aired. But he wanted to see if it actually was indeed true that they had made it. So they went to the L.A. Times. TV log, and in there it is listed. It is called Conspiracy Silence. If you can, do some research and look up Conspiracy Silence, okay? The power of the press. They changed and reprinted the entire TV guide, and the whole thing was never shown publicly. I do not have the copy. But and I am in the process of researching how and where to get one since Gunderson is now gone. He continuously probed, continuously worked, continuously talked to various sources and docu documented and got the word out. Here's an XBI, ex, ex FBI chief that did all this. Look for conspiracy silence, America. Americans, for the most part, are oblivious to what's really going on behind the scenes. And they need to really start pulling their heads out of their behinds and understanding that the little safe place we thought we lived in called Earth is an illusion. It's not real. We don't live in the safe place that we thought we did. And it's kind of like the red pill, blue pill type thing. That Matrix movie could not be any more accurate if it tried. In fact, in some conversations I've had with some people, we've all theorized that we could potentially be being used for an energy source. And that if they keep us upset, they keep us angry, they keep us sick, you know, that emotion could be a form of energy for them you know something they use in order to power up themselves or to feed off of or I'm not really sure what but something is going on here guys now sound like David David Palladius is so cute he always says that he always says now <laughs> I'm going to end this here I just this is kind of a complicated um, podcast to do for me because I'm in a car and it's dark and I was dumb enough to do my notes in green ink. So <laughs> I had to actually find pens. Uh, I wanted to read you something that really I'm going to have a guest on that. I've got oh boy, probably six, seven people lined up as guests on my show. And as usual, we, we all try to get together. Something happens and we just don't. But we will be. You know, I will make it happen. And um, hang on a second. My nose is so clogged up here. Um, 
I wanted to, there's a man that wrote to me and I find, I found what he had to say completely fascinating. It was just fascinating. He is a, a Vietnam vet. I believe it's a Vietnam vet. He said he was a disabled veteran. I thought what he said was he was from Vietnam. I might be wrong. His name is James. I'm not going to give his last name because I don't have permission to, but I wanted to read you. This was why um, when he wrote this to me, I was like, James, I've got to have you on my show as a guest. So this is what he said. It's something to think about. Okay. Really some crazy stuff. Greetings. I am re reaching out as per your request from you in your YouTube comments. First, let me thank you for listening and also for being unafraid to tackle this head on in a way no one else does. About me, I am a 100% disabled veteran, fully retired in 2016 due to disability. I am a Persian Gulf War 91 veteran, so I've been devoting myself almost full-time to this subject's subject since 2016. I am uneducated. Un he doesn't say uneducated. He says it in a different way. Un no, I'm going to take that back, guys. He didn't say he's uneducated. That was wrong of me to say. Um... It's like he's dedicated, I think, is what he's he means here. It's just misspelled. But he says um, he's a well-read person, and he doesn't seek publicity. But he feels this information will be critical for all of us to understand. My experiences started in the early 70s when I woke up and saw two basketball-sized red orbs staring at me. I couldn't scream or move and oddly fell right back to sleep. I have since experienced shadow men, etc. as a child. I first got on the track of the whole child abduction thing. In 1993, I was in Bamberg, Germany, 82nd, and he says E-N-G-R-B-N, so I'm not sure what that stands for, but you army guys would understand. 3rd Infantry Division. I read an article from Stars and Stripes about the Finder's cult and possibly CIA involvement. In those days, there was no Internet, so there was very little information, but I read anything I could. I was also reading all I could about cryptid, supernatural, and the occult. It's funny how God opened some of our, so many of our eyes up. Some of, like, I don't know what that is, why some people are so, you know, awake and others just aren't. I'm not sure. Okay. I continued to study all I could lay my hands on. I read Area 51, A Secret History, which finally pulled it all together for me. The author, forget her name, tells about Jack Parlance, Edward Teller, and their practice of sex magic to summon spirits to gain knowledge supposedly for U.S. defense use. There you go. Summon spirits, sex magic. Why would any of these people be doing this stuff if there wasn't something to it? They conducted a lot of the, these ceremonies at what is now Area 51, some of the most heavily guarded places in the world. Surprise, surprise. If you haven't read it, A Secret History, It Is Great, and Linda Moulton Howell recently did a show, Biology of Alien Greys, where she discusses the Roswell crash. She read from a 1947 leaked government document which discussed the Greys found on mm -hmm. the craft. Oh, okay. So, so uh she read from a 1947 leaked government document which discussed the greys found on the craft. If you haven't seen this, go to her YouTube channel, Earth Files, and watch it. Long story short, the greys are aborted. Get this, guys. Okay, the theory is the greys are, uh, are aborted human fetuses, surgically altered artificially grown and reanimated by unknown 
means, my nose is so clogged up, bear with me. Unknown means, they're animated or reanimated by, that would be extraterrestrial or fallen angel technology. And it was beyond any known world government except maybe Nazi Germany. Also, the eyes are surgically attached lens from unknown source. I theorize cow eyes, and I'll get to that in a bit, and that would make sense, wouldn't it? Cow eyes, the cow mutilations, um, aborted children. You know, I've always thought that, not that I've always thought, but God told me that the aliens are demons, and... Or they're dark, they're, they're demonic forces or from the dark, the darkness. And obviously the, the greys are not fallen angels because fallen angels would not look like that. So these are little helpers that the fallen angels have created. If this all sounds far out, go to YouTube and search German Breakaway Civilization, German South Pole, Antarctica. It'll verify and save time. I theorize that the Germans contacted these entities, a non-human intelligence, and gained vast knowledge. Through Operation Paperclip, these German scientists got to America and started it all up again. The Roswell crash was to give America an incentive to get technology by dealing with this intel intelligence. Some of our government knew and tried to get it out. They also infiltrated the Soviet Union and I believe played both ends against the middle. I think that this non-human intelligence is the source of this phenomenon and it is demonic. Now, to remember, demonic is a word that we use for basically the underworld or the, you know, like Robin said, um, there's AI, the draconians, and then there's the cabal, and then there's our government, okay? They're not the same as Satan and the underworld. But when we use demonic, we're basically saying anything of the dark darkness, of the dark world, the underworld, dark forces, whatever it is. It's a very generalized term, not to be taken literally. So if some people say demons are actually the spirits of giants, um, you know, I'm not being literal here or technical. When Burus, Burus, think that was his name, Burus, wrote History of the World, he stated, all knowledge came from the fallen. That's true. Pliny the Elder also stated the same. In all religions, it was the gods, no little g, that taught man. Yeah, little g meaning the fallen angels that taught man. They would be gods to human beings. They weren't gods, okay? They were fallen angels that were cast out because they were bet rebellious. On the cattle, I mean, you got to understand, you know, the father knows he sees everything. He sees what can happen from certain actions. And they, they, you know, rebelled. They went against him. And he knew the destruction that this would cause, you know. On the cattle mutilations, man once gave the tongue, eyes, genitals, and blood as a sacrifice to lesser gods. Search ancient pagan religious rites or read about the power of blood to draw spirits in the Bible. I want to know what is going on with this bloodlust? Even from our own God, why is blood so required, so wanted? I understand that there's life in blood, that the life force is in the blood. But it, it, it just, you know, mm -hmm. some of it feels so vampiric to me. It's, it's very bizarre that, you know, there, everything really revolves around blood. Even the sacrifices and stuff back in the Old Testament and stuff, it's pretty unnerving to me. So there's a lot we don't know or understand, and we just accept because we're told that. Okay, so uh, power of blood to draw spirits in the Bible. I think the spirits are simply getting it themselves. I also noted that areas where Islam and Judaism are practiced seem to have no reports. You could say this is simply because they aren't reported, or could it be because they ritually slaughter their meat? 
and I cannot talk because my nose is stuffed up. Although modern investigators say it started in the 60s, if you read the collected works mm-hmm. of Charles mm-hmm. Fort, come on, phone, uh, he details such attacks back to 1700 to address the why boys aspect or I'm sorry, to address the why boys aspect of these sick devils, humans who do this, Alistair Crowley stated boys were the best for sex magic magic as they gave the most power. Plus, it is an abomination to God started by the watchers and condemned by Jesus. Whomever caused one of my little ones to stumble, I hope you are conversant with adrenochrome Mm -hmm. i'm sorry about my phone it keeps going off i don't know why people cannot leave me alone for a few minutes to podcast if not search it out pizzagate question mark you have to go to a bit bit shoot to get the info on it but worth the time so adrenochrome adrenochrome pizzagate and bit shoot b-i-t-c-h-u-t-e So research it, guys. Also search, I recommend DuckDuckGo, Frazzle Drip, but do not watch the video if you find it. He did not clarify why. It might be something that could curse you, so be careful. Don't be too daring. If somebody tells you not to watch the video, if you find it, there's a reason. Do not watch it until I figure out why. I'm going to talk to him further, and we'll find out. So if you get into this video, do not watch it, okay? You will also find out about the Illuminati, Masons, etc. You'll find the agenda behind abortions, bowel sacrifices, and satanic ritual abuse. I know a lot about that already. Finally, there is someone fighting all this, QAnon. Don't know how you feel about it, but it is only... It is the only thing I can find that addresses all of this. If you have questions, comments, etc., I'll answer them if I can. You could contact me or text me. Set my number. He said his number. Um, text first. I usually don't answer calls. Um, believe me or not, I have now told my tale. Also be warned as this stuff is an emotional tar baby, and the more you slap it, the more you get stuck. Pray before research. It helps. I have tried others, the, the facts by how to hunt, which read a couple of my letters, but has ignored me since. A lot of these guys do that. They'll get you on their channels. I've noticed it. They want you so badly to come on their channel to do a, I've been on them before, uh, to do a, you know, they want you, they want your entertainment. They want you to tell your story, you know, come on my channel, tell my story or send me your letters. I'll read it. And then they just, then they just go dead. They don't ever contact you again. They've gotten what they wanted out of you and then they're done with you. And I can't stand that. Okay. This is a, this, we are a community of people that are in a battle together. And we need to be supportive with one another. You don't just ditch people because you've gotten their story and now you're done with them. It's ridiculous. Um, David Pilates, who went on out of his way to tell me, no way, are demons responsible? I have grave concerns about him. Scott Carpenter, L.A. Marzulli, and Linda Moulton Howe. The first two were the only acknowledgement I got at all. So again, thanks. And I am here if you want to know the particulars, but I am... Typing on a phone and my arthritis is getting to me. Take care. Stay vigilant. Put on the full armor of God. God bless. James. And I am going to have James on my show. And James, if you're if you're listening to this, I hope you don't don't mind I read this. Um, I figured since you're coming on the show, you agreed to well talk to me. He's gonna we're gonna do a live recording, or not a live recording, but I'm gonna do a recording of him. He said he's hard to understand, and I think it's because he's Vietnamese, but I'm not sure. I might have that fact wrong. Um but it's okay. I mean we'll work through it and get through this. Um but since he agreed to that, I, I had to read this to you. This was crazy. The um not crazy crazy like is I don't I don't believe it crazy. I do believe it. I, I give it all uh, the benefit of the doubt, because you just never know. Oh, what a night. So you guys, uh, love you all. You know, please try to keep the comments polite. Do not assume anything about me. You know, um, I'm just out here trying to fight the good fight. That's all I'm doing. 
and the things I see are pretty disturbing. So I'm going to uh, continue on with my the uh, third episode of Ted Gunderson in a few days here. I'm trying to get to my podcasting. I'm having a hard time with it because my family life has become so crazy for me. But I'm hoping that within the next week it settles down a lot. So God bless you guys. You know, stay in prayer. Um, say your prayers. You know, if you don't believe in God, if you don't want to hear about God, I'll tell you what, do something for me. I want you to go to YouTube and I want you to look up just give yourself 10 different near-death experience stories where people die and they see the Lord. People that are atheists, that were, you know, Islamists, uh, that were part of Islam, um, people that were just hateful to God, you know, people that were, you know, believed in that New Age stuff, doctors, you know, little boys that aren't even old enough to barely know what's going on or know anything about the Bible, like the heaven is for real testimony. Um, look up some of these stories and then start thinking, okay, do I really still not believe? Is it that you don't believe or is it that you don't want accountability for living your life how you want to live? You don't want to be bothered to have accountability. You don't want to change you don't want to have to worry about what you do or what you say or how you think or how you feel. You just want to be left alone to live how you want to live. Are you bitter or angry because of life? You know, what are the reasons why you run away from God? But look up these stories, guys. Really look into some of them. And then start really wondering, you know. Think about what they tell you and what they have to say. There's some really good stories out there. So just check it out not going to push it on you. You have a right to believe what you believe. You guys take care. Love to you all. Have a great, wonderful night, wonderful day, and I should be on soon. Take care, guys.